I don't know if I can ask a question that doesn't relate to anything that we talked on tonight to Steve. Go ahead. And I think Jeff dropped off. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Okay. Sorry about um, that. My husband and I, we were to see a health practitioner last week. And like she had some like scientific questions. And one of them was, uh, what is the pH of the ace manin? The ace manin is a, has a neutral pH. It, it is not an acidic substance and it's not completely alkaline either. So if we were to measure the pH most of the time, you'd have to measure it in its liquid state or after it's been added to liquid and you're going to see it around 7.2, 7.4. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, thanks. Um, and can you tell me what turns, how does it turn off the, I'm not going to say this probably right, the spatic like, is it oxygen or hydrogen or ozonated? As far as which product? Um, the aloe, the, the ace manin. And so what, what are you asking if, if it turns off? Yeah, because she wanted to know, yeah, how it turns off and does it suppress it or take the oxygen out? She does um, aloe from Germany for a tonic for an IB for cancer. Okay. For cancer. Okay. So the the aloes that are put into tonics they have to be a very low molecular weight. Anything that is injected has to be under sixty thousand. As a matter of fact, under ten thousand is preferred. Uh, Dalton's. So you're going to get benefit from that because anything between 5,000, 400,000 Daltons in molecular weight activates the macrophage and the immune system. However, you want a broad spectrum. And by having that narrow spectrum, I understand that that's all they can do that way, but, but that's, that's fine. When, when the aloe is filtered and then freeze dried, there is no oxygen there. We're not, we're not actually doing anything to remove that. It's just naturally there. The aloe doesn't oxidize. It, it, it's not something that oxidizes quickly. The problem occurs, and the reason we haven't been able to put this into a complex, in a, in a powder, in a tub, is because our ace manin is water soluble and it will absorb water. It's, it's a moisture accumulator and it will end up hardening up. And, and so that's why we have to keep it in the capsules versus a right. complex. And, and I've experimented with that, but that's, that's a different story. I'm not going to get into that tonight. Right. But, but what, what we understand is there, there's no oxygenation and there's no reason to even consider that in something. I understand in, in her use, it's got to be a sterile environment that it's processed and you've got to keep it at that molecular weight of typically under 10,000 Daltons. But we want to use the broad spectrum because it does so many more things than just what it does at that lower molecular weight. Each of those fractions of, of molecular weights of the ace manin do something different for the body. It activates different components within the immune system. So macrophage activation is of course most important to us, but then there's the cellular communication aspects of it too that Jeff likes to talk about where it allows our our liver to produce glycoforms to go on the cell surface so that our cells can communicate with each other. It, it's a very complex alphabet and there's millions of different combinations that can be made with these eight particular saccharides that are, these glycoforms are made of. So it allows our body to communicate. And again, I don't think that was the purpose of this call, but there's no bad questions. And I wanna make sure that right. I have you answered on that. One thing that's important, and you you nailed it right there, Steve-O, is, but, you know, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, January 22nd, 2002, uh, stated, and I quote, altering the surface sugars associated with cancer cells can control tumor growth. And for 16 years, they've been trying to actually do that and um, even reducing it down to the minute fractions of Dalton to allow it to be used intravenously. 
uh, with some moderate to slight benefits. But the reality is in 2018 in Nature's Journal, they published that only through an oral ingestation of the fractions between 50 and 400,000 would actually work uh, at blocking tumor growth in cancer cells and the uptake of sugar into cancer cells, which of course fed the growth of them. So they tried it every way, up, down, and sideways, but they found that only through an oral ingestation. I heard a doctor say one time, swallow it, it works. And so the, the, the method by which it's, by which it's applied, uh, and I also know that the monocytes and the granulocytes, and uh, when they look and identify a pathogen and phagocytosis occurs, that the first thing they do is send communicative signals back to activate the macrophage. So even macrophages are actually activated due to cellular communication. Without cellular communication, nothing happens, period. Macrophages sit there and wait for a call. So it is cellular communication that activates everything. And the activity was designed in human physiology to be consumed orally. Imagine what God was thinking. I mean, shoot, he didn't know about doctors back then and he didn't realize we could have done it an easier way according to them. But our bodies are built to consume it orally. And that's probably puts us outside the box of, of what we consider medical science. And that's why I see the benefits I think we've seen for over 20 years. So uh, it's nice to have science finally come around and actually prove what we've been saying all along. So um, just my opinion, need to throw that out there on the table. There's a lot of science behind this, but sometimes um, it is what it is. So great comments. You know, one thing I want to talk about, you know, about the hope movement and hope movement replays, I just want to give a a big shout out to Aaron Copeland for what he's done. You know, he put together the site, uh, hopemovementreplays.info, and has not only parked uh, the replays in areas of, of, you know, categorically by international and training and other things, but is looking at those that are most popular and, and, and kind of looking at how to build somewhat of an algorithm to bring the most popular to the top. And so he's watching all that real close for all of us. And uh, just recently, he's been taking these little snippets and uh, editing, edit, editing them down to little pieces where people can go in and watch just little parts uh, of what they may want to know. And so I just want to thank you, Aaron, for what you're doing here. Um, you know, they say it takes a skill, but it takes more than that. It takes a talent. And I just want to thank you for uh, not only your skill, but also investing your talent uh, to helping all of us, because it's what makes us work is having a place where we can just say, well, you got to hear this. Or you got to go look at this. And uh, so uh, that's going to be of much more benefit than I think even it is today. So just thank you for that. And I wanted to let everybody know that. And he's on the, the line with you. You probably see him waving back and forth, making sure everything's working good. So thank you, Aaron. I have another question, if I could, two questions. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, concerning the entourage, uh, the question one was what to, terpenes are used and how much terpenes are put in? A couple things on that I want to cover before Steve gets into that uh, is I don't Sorry. go into those details because it lends to more details. Um, and, and I just, uh, I know Steve is going to have a good answer for that and probably a way uh, for, for people to say here, I'm not sure, but here you can go look at that. Um, because uh, I, I myself steer away from that, that detail. Um, because it's irrelevant to me personally building a business or helping them understand. But I know some people get locked in on that and want to know those particular details, but they can really um, uh, slow a, a, a business down, you know, in some ways. I just wanted to, to let people know how I feel on that. So be careful of those details like that. Just my opinion. Steve, go ahead. Yeah, this was the health practitioner that I asked. That's number two. With all due respect, if... Um, well, I'll just leave that alone for now. I just know this, um, people wouldn't be listening to us. Uh, you know, I just, um, I try and when I say change the way people think and how they do their health, it involves in some ways with stopping a little bit of the thinking that they've been using all along. So us to integrate and prove to that side over there, the benefits of what's going on here. First of all, I know if they did know it was truth, a medical professional couldn't have anything to do with it without relinquishing their license to be involved with it. And so we've seen that over time. So it's either, I hate to say it like it sounds, it's either uh, one way or the other way, but it's never going to really work well both ways. And so I'm real careful of that. And um, just to put my opinion out here on the table, go ahead. So, 
so we do add a proprietary terpene blend, to be honest with you, we keep that proprietary and, and a few of them are listed on the label and I've gone through them in my presentation. I mean, obviously we, we use uh, limonene and, and we, we use um, uh, myrcene because of the effects that we need uh, from those by removing the THC, we needed to add some more of those. But we actually had an expert. He is the number one expert in hemp oil that, that, that is known to anybody. He's been on many documentaries, but he did this as a favor to myself and Sam Castor when he advised us which ones to put in. It's a proprietary blend, but we're using the same terpenes that you can find in the plant we just added extra of a particular blend of about five terpenes to make it make up for taking the THC out completely because THC does have some great benefits to it, but we also, we want the healthy without the high. And it's not that the THC is necessarily going to make you high, but we also want people to be able to use this from all walks of life. And so that's why we're very careful about that. But as far as, the, the product itself goes, it, it, the results are what actually causes that product to sell. We have a lot of people that have tried a lot of different CBD or hemp oil products. And when they try our product, when they look at the entourage and try it, they actually get better results from it. Now, if somebody is dealing with cancer and they're not worried about their job, I tell them, go find a full spectrum product that is loaded with THC because there are specific benefits to having THC, especially if you're somebody who is dealing with cancer. None of the terpenes that we add to that product are going to cause you to have the munchies. And one of the problems that people dealing with cancer treatments are faced with is they don't feel hungry and they start to lose a lot of weight and their body starts to break itself down. And that is actually causing them to struggle more when they're trying to fight off the aberrant cells. So by having a, a cancer that is, is really you know stage two, stage three, or even stage four, I would then recommend you go with a full spectrum product with a lot of THC, maybe as much as 8%, and load up on the immune capsules instead. But for people that have jobs and want to be able to get some of the benefits of hemp oil, of course, Entourage is number one in my book. And you said you had another question as well. Your mute's on, Elaine. A fermented beet product without sugar, is that any comparison to ours? There, there, there's no such thing. It, mm -hmm. it ferment a beet product, it still has sugar. Our manufacturer owns the patent on breaking the sugar bond from the betalins and from the um, proanthocyanidins that are in the beet root. So anybody that says, you know, fermenting things does not make them sugar-free by any stretch. So that's, that's where I stand on that. And, and also, I, I would add that having fermented beets, you're still not getting the concentration of 500 cooked beets in a serving. So what we have is so concentrated, it's not going to compare to any oral ingestation of beets or beetroot juice. Steve, isn't fermenting sugar what they used to do in the hills in Tennessee years ago or something like that? Yeah. The Duke boys used to do that, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I would have not known that. Any other questions? Okay, Jeff, anything you want to, it's your call. You, you have anything else you want to cover? People tuned in for the, the back office training and stayed for the science. It's great. 
Oh, I just love every bit of it, um, and I, I love those deep questions too. And uh, so I just appreciate you bringing that up, Elaine. There's just a lot of people that you know like to dive into the deep end here with us, and uh, I don't mean you, but other people are going to confront us on that. And sometimes the short answer is the best answer, and um, so um, it just gets people's attention. So um, that's awesome. You know, I, I tell you, you know, working with people, you never know what they're going to throw at you, and one thing I've learned is the best, most sincere thing you can ever say to somebody is, I don't know, uh, but I'll, I'll sure see what I can do to find out. That's a good question because, you know, every question that we don't know leads us to something more that we could know. And, and, and that's an opportunity. So um, it's just a learning curve, if you will. And um, sure, we get better. And sometimes we think that if we can get better, then we can be more convincible. Um, don't fool yourself because, you know, again, the prophet's always without honor in his own lands. And a lot of times it's not a matter of how much you've learned and know and been able to pick up along the way. Uh, there are a lot of people that have seen you and been around you for years, maybe. And they, they wonder why all of a sudden you've stepped into this area or why you would know that, or how, you know, how could you know about this or that? And, you know, sometimes even a great, you know, medical professional stumbles even harder than what we do, because you know, we think, gee, if, if a, a doctor realized this and really understood this, you know, they could be more effective helping more and more people. And, you know, I've seen some incredible dedicated medical professionals that just could not, could not, for whatever reason, get somebody to look into uh, even Ace Manning and other, you know, important factors that we've all learned and they have eventually learned. So it is, uh, it's very unique. It's very, uh, in some cases, tough, but you know, again, that brings us back to what I believe we're all called to do. And that's the best we can do. Because you know what, um, we're just not here to know everything. And we're not the end all be all just as we're not all right hands as our left hand is needed. And so we all have to be a little different than another part. And as we put this, if you will, body together to begin to serve people. Um, and as I said, on a call Sunday night, uh, on earth as it is in heaven, that the will be done. And, and that's what I see here. And uh, we have an incredible gift of healing. It goes up against the grain of everything that would be considered status quo. And, um, you know, maybe that's a, a message for the, the finale of this call is to think about the time that we're in. And uh, whether you're for or against this new administration coming in, it really doesn't matter. You know, if you're one or the other, there's the other side that sits there and looks at the way you think and says, why would you think like that? And so there's always, again, the opposing force. Uh, what sets probably anything apart is the truth. And that comes out in facts and results. And so when you look at everything that science has to offer today and medical science and what is coming through our medical system today, and we look at the problems in health and everything that people face, what is it that they're really looking for? And I believe it's just that, truth. What can I do to help myself and my family? And you know, um, again, just like the vision I think was given to Sam and Linda Castor over 20 years ago of a Joseph company, a company that would be given the provision for a, a time when the world would be at great need. And I see that that's where we're at here today. And um, so whatever it takes is the answer to, to make this work uh, because in most cases, it's not our lives anymore that's at stake. It could be the stake of somebody else's life and what they're doing and maybe that we don't even know of today. 2020 took a toll on a lot of people in a lot of ways, and most of them weren't good ways. So let's see how we can make those ways better for everybody. You know, there are people that stepped off into their addictions, into their alcoholisms and other isms and things like that. People went into isolation. People went into you know, situations they never dreamed of. And so uh, it's put a strain on relationships. It's put a, a strain on, on families as a whole. So we have a, a mechanism, I think, of healing. And, um, you know, that's just been my message. And that's what I see more clearly today. We have a message of healing. And it comes in so many shapes and forms that, you know, everybody needs some part of it in some place. So um, here it is Wednesday. Uh, it's middle of the week. We've got a couple more days before we close out this week. Um, if you're having a tough time helping somebody understand immune, well, just know that Marlene and I do too, and so does Shalene, and Steve does too, and 
you know, uh, Steve's family in, in their own right, um, a portion of them do embrace immune, but Steve has brothers and sisters that probably still laugh at him. And, you know, nobody could share the value of Ace Manning better than I think Steve Burns. So we're all facing the same dilemma with those that are around us. But you know what? It just takes one to make the difference. And um, for the most part, I thank all of you for being a part of making that difference for me and somebody else. So um, let's do better. Nobody has a comment or a question. The line's open. You can unmute and bring anything you choose up to the table here. Um, it's your call, not mine. Uh, Jeff. Jeff, do you have that 2018 for the oral intake? Can you tell me where that was found again? Mm, Steve Burns might be able to send it to you. It's a text message that floated around a while. I might be able to scroll back through my text messages and find it. It's Nature's Journal, October, uh, November 2018. And um, gosh, I don't remember where I recently got it, but it's- She needs to know, she can find it from that. Yeah. 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 You can find it out right. and found it, you bet. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Up take of Manos, um, something or other. Yeah, so here's, here's my question to Elaine. There, you were very specific about your question and I'm, I'm happy that this practitioner is open to, to learning or, or hearing about our products, but it, is, it so, is it a loved one you're dealing with? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but I'm just, I'm just curious. No, it's no one personal. It's just that this healthcare uh, she's practitioner, really, she's, really looking for a new... she's really looking for some new things and just had these questions that you know we had no answers for, had no answers for. well and, and most most people wouldn't i mean there's like five of us that could answer that yeah, so, exactly. so, so dr renee hurdy i would use her as Steve, the, that's four of you Don't uh, me. I, I would use uh, her as an example because right. mayo clinic actually invited her to come up and participate she was going to, to run her studies through them, but she's now there actually working with them, overseeing those studies and the Dream for the Cure Foundation. So let me be clear, Mayo is not studying. Mayo is where the studies are being done, but Mayo itself is not studying that. So I don't want anybody making that claim, but Dr. Renee Hurdy, who is the very first person to get a antibody drug approved through the FDA for cancer treatment is she is big time. She's not, she's not great at doing talks. She's a very nervous speaker. That's why we don't have her on a lot of zooms. She's just, that's not her forte as a, as a lecturer. She's a brilliant research scientist. That's what, that's what I can say about her, but she knows her stuff. They're doing cutting edge work in the areas of brain cancer. And, and so She's a great example to any healthcare practitioner that will listen. But you have to understand healthcare practitioners, as much as they care about people and want to help, they can't prescribe nutritional supplements. So we can only get so far with them. And typically when you're getting great results because you're supporting your body and your body is doing the work, the doctor will say to you, and the best thing they can say to you is just keep doing what you're doing. They may show us some interest, but ultimately all they can say legally is keep doing what you're doing. But if she's looking for some things to support her patients and, and help them and she can recommend something, again, you can't prescribe it. Our products do support human physiology. That's what they're designed to do. Steve? Yes, Martha. Uh, for Thank someone you. in her uh, case who might be working with a healthcare professional, and I understand Jeff's position. It's not like those are the people top on our list to try to educate. But if you're in the middle of something like that, what kind of words would could somebody use to kind of make that bridge instead of trying to get all those answers themselves and then give them back to that person? What kind of words could we use to say, give us those words? If you're interested in being able to make a difference with your patients to improve the standard of care with complementary integrative support, 
then I would love to connect you with some people that can talk to you about that. That's how you phrase it. Because if they're not interested, you're not seeing the right doctor. Jeff can tell you how to, a thing or two about picking a doctor. Well, I haven't had that good of experience, but I've had a lot of doctors that have sort of shown up over time and um, probably one doctor that taught me more than any was a man by the name of Dr. Rayburn W. Gowen. And I had reached out to a friend of mine who she uh, was dating a friend of mine. She was a chiropractor in a small town here in Oklahoma. And she told me over the phone, if it was network marketing, she wanted nothing to do with it. So I was friends enough, I guess, to say that because she was a doctor, she had to listen. So I brought the guy that shared it with me up to see her and, and it really overwhelmed her about what was going on with Ace Man. And this was 20 years ago. And one thing led to another. She wanted her sister to look at it. Her sister was having some health problems. It really helped her. Uh, neither one of them were interested in the business side, but this other guy wanted to know about it. He came in to have a chiropractic adjustment. He wasn't interested, but the individual in the booth next to him uh, could overhear her and he wanted to know about it who um, um, called me and I helped him get started. And he gave some information to a retired Methodist minister that was doing a Bible study class who gave some information to a retired um, cardiologist uh, by the name of Dr. Rayburn Gowen in his Bible study class. Dr. Gowen told him it was hogwash, nothing, uh, would ever work like that. And, but he would look at it and he uh, did his own little trials and research for close to a year before he said it was the greatest discovery in modern science. After about two years, he got real upset. He says, I'm a medical doctor. I practiced medicine for over 60 years. I see more miracles every single day with this technology than I saw in 60 years of practicing medicine combined. He said, if I've made um, hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in the monies I've charged people for who, who would adhere to my advice. And today I can't get anybody to listen. He goes, how some, how come some redheaded guy who sold tires for a living can get more people to listen to this? I'm a medical doctor. They should listen to me. And, uh, we all kind of laughed when he gave that statement, but he turned and looked at me and I could tell he wasn't laughing. He was very serious about that. And uh, again, that's the uniqueness of what we have our hands on. It defies wisdom. It doesn't matter what credentials you have. Uh, I've got a good friend of mine who works as a physician at a hospital in Kansas City who uh, was brought up before the state medical board because he saw in his practice what Ace Manning could do to help his patients that meant more than anything he'd ever learned in medicine as a DO. Uh, he began to recommend it to some of his patients. One of them complained that he was selling this nutritional vitamin stuff. And uh, he was brought before the state medical board on charges of doing something unethical within his practice that was not allowed according to standard of care. And uh, he relinquished any activity at that point to, to keep his medical license. He now works at Mercy and won't go today without this technology. Uh, he's very excited about our Hope Pops and has passed those out to all the members of and his interns on his staff. Um, but you know what? He uh, is very cautious because uh, that's the threat our incredible professionals are under. And um, it's kind of shocking, if you will. I saw one medical doctor who would have no interest. Uh, a lady paid $100 to have 15 minutes of his time for me to go in there and sit down and share this with him. When I sat down, he looked at my chart and he said, Mr. Allen, doesn't look like you've got a health problem. Why are you here? I said, well, sir, we paid $100 for 15 minutes of your time. I'd like you to listen. And he looked at me real funny a very highly rated medical doctor in Tulsa, Oklahoma here. I wouldn't dare mention his name. He's well noted. And um, so he set his clipboard down and he began to listen. And uh, when I got to the problems with um, certain conditions, uh, he brought up a statement. He said, you know, I've never seen chronic fatigue ever, ever exist except in the last few years. And I said, well, this is, you know, what is entailed. And I explained a little bit more. He said, you know, that makes sense to me. You'll tell my nurse to to get me uh, eight or 10 containers of that because I wanted to take a, a few of my patients. I challenged him to get his worst patients uh, together to see what benefit he could have. Over the course of about 90 days, he, he bought close to $10,000 worth of Ace Manin. Uh, oh, it seems that would be exciting, but after 90 days, he quit buying. And uh, what he did was hire an attorney and a 
um, an apothecary chemist. And uh, the attorney checked to make sure that they would never get their patents uh, because they had a composition of matter patents. So he duplicated and made another product and started selling it out of his practice that he made himself personally. So, um, you know, it taught me some lessons there. But I know this. I've seen people on their knees crying and praying and going to doctors, spending everything they've got. And you know what? Uh, it seems like we're the last resort for them. And my goal before they put me in the ground is to help people understand this should be their first resort. You know, take care of their body the way God designed it. And uh, it starts with cellular communication. So I've gone along and kind of explained that. And I know, again, we're thinking if I could just get this one individual, well, you may and you may not. But you know what? You, you know, you may be standing there doing something with somebody you see all the time and, and, and their mom or their brother or their sister, maybe their wife is got an ambulance at their house every week. And you wonder, wow, you know, you think they'd want to know about this? You just don't prejudge people. Don't let them get by without knowing because you'll certainly want to be in a position to say, I'm glad I did instead of, I wish I had. So, um, and Jeff, well, open. Jeff, you know, I want to, I want to throw this out there. You, you don't want to talk about this in the patient room. You don't want to talk about this in the waiting room. You want to talk about it in the living room. You know, this is a, a, person-to-person -person business. And I understand we can't get together right now in a lot of areas, but you understand what I'm saying. And what Jeff is saying is our healthcare practitioners, it's not that they might not be interested or not want to do it. It's that they can't do it. They just, they can't do it. We would love to get somebody that's influential like that to share, but really this is a person-to-person way of doing business. And, and that's what social business is about. It's about allowing people to build teams of teams. And where we'd all like to get, you know, Dr. Medmond Oz to get on and say, everybody needs to go buy this. It's not a realistic thing. It's not something that's duplicatable, but you can talk to your loved ones, the people you know, you can make that list that we always talk about of people who you think could use some help. And just about everybody, statistically, it's six out of 10 people that need some type of help with their health, some type of support that you could give their bodies. And our products don't treat, cure, mitigate disease. That's true. But they are, again, designed to support human physiology. We've got a little bit long tonight, so no last comments. Let's uh, call tonight. Good night, everybody, and as always, may God bless all of y'all indeed. Thank Good you, night, Jeff everybody. and Steve. Good night. Good night. Thank you.